Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a topic that I feel is really, really important. And it's so important, but still, yet, it, get, it is not getting the attention it deserves in the testing community. And it is a topic that if you, if you don't do this, if you ignore this and do everything else right, you might as well fail. So that's, this is why this is so important. My name is uh, Håkan Ramberg. I work as the CEO of Knowit Quality Services in Malmö. I've been working uh, as a tester and a test consultant for more than 10 years. And uh, the last couple of years I've been working more and more with, uh, within business development of a consultancy company, really. And by doing this, I've been able to combine basically my two passions, for testing and for business development. I've got into sales and w worked more with sales to hear about other companies' troubles, problems and uh, issues they have around testing and uh, hel help them to support them in different solutions for that, for their problems. So in this I also want to share some experiences from my years uh, working with this. I want to first tell you a story. It's a true story, but I have modified it slightly. Uh, and it's about a company, a tester who was working for a company who were releasing a worldwide, it was a big international company, releasing a software going uh, live in all around the world. And uh, one of the testers uh, found an issue, found a bug, where the first lo logo here, was uh, the incorrect green color, and uh, it's kind of difficult to see it here, but it, it was uh, incorrect of the company logo uh, for this system. It was the incorrect green, green bluish color. Uh, so the one to the left here, A, is the incorrect one, and the logo B is the correct one. And when the tester found this, he said, mm, he was uh, thinking, okay, how, wh what kind of severity is this bug? How should I put this in the, in the bug tracking system? So I want to ask you here first, who, who here thinks that uh, this is a critical bug or who would have submitted it as a critical bug? Who, who would submit it as a minor bug? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can have both ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it depends, of, absolutely. But uh, what happened here was that the the tester was submitting it, submitting it as a minor defect, which resulted in that the the developers didn't focus on correcting this. So when they came uh, to the release, when it was time to go live, um, everything. The developers have focused on uh, correcting the major issues instead. And uh, when the business owner saw the system, he, he was terrified because he said, hey, what's this? It's the incorrect logo. We cannot have that. I mean, this is uh, also, so he saw this as a shop showstopper, really, for the entire project. They weren't able to release before this was fixed. And this is an example of how we as a tester sometimes can go into the mode seeing on a defect or an, a tr in a issue in a maybe a more technical way. They say, I mean, this is very easy to fix, so it, it wasn't that big an issue. But if it had been released uh, worldwide, it would have been an issue to, to fix it later. So it's really important to understand the concept around and the business domain around what you are testing, not only from a technical side, but also from a business side. So anyone here about, uh, have heard about the T-shaped competence model? It's a model who, who seems to 
uh, visualize uh, the importance of having a breadth of knowledge, could be, for example, within testing, to be able to, yeah, you should be skilled at uh, uh, finding bugs, writing uh, defect reports and so on. Uh, but then you should also have a depth of expertise where you focus your skills in one particular area. And uh, this could be, for example, test automation, something like that. And I think it's a good, good model, uh, but what it's really dangerous about it is that all too often people consider the depth of expertise as a technical one and always primarily focus on the technical part. Yeah, test automation, I want to get better at this, and more skilled programmer, or wh what it could be, something like that. And, I mean, it's not wrong I in itself. I, I mean, it's still very important to, to build this strength, uh, the technical strength and expertise as well. But it is really important to not forget and no neglect the business part. So I would like to introduce to you the pie-shaped competence model, where we have a business part as well. And we, because if we ignore the business, the business part, it doesn't really matter how, how good the technical part is, because you won't really benefit the most of what you could uh, without the business domain knowledge. You can, of course, say that, but hey, it's other people who have this business domain. I, I'm technical skilled and I do my work. But I don't think it cut it. I mean, you, you can do more than that. You can do better than that. And if you really want to provide exceptional value, not only to a team, but to the entire organization, I would say it's really important to have a business domain as well. Let's take a step back and uh, have a look at what is a company really about, or business, so to speak. If we look at the definition of a company, we can see that a company is a collection of individuals with a common purpose to focus their various talents, skills, or resources to achieve specific declared goals. Okay? And if we continue, it says that there are four categories of a company. Either you are working at a voluntary association, uh, or you're working, yeah, a group of soldiers, or you're working in a business entity with the aim of gaining a profit, or a financial entities or banks. Anyone uh, working in voluntary association? Anyone <laughs> working for a group of soldiers? Anyone working in the banks? No? So I will focus on the third part. It was lucky for me, but uh, I will focus on the third part, which, which is the business entity where many people are working with. And what is really important and interesting about already in the definition, it says that the aim of the, of the business is to gaining a profit. And this is really important to understand that the aim of the company you are working with is to make profit. I don't say it's a short-term profit that you should uh, maximize uh, profit this year and, and then don't uh, and then get ruined the, the second or third year. But I, I say the aim of gaining a profit is on a long-term basis. So you need to keep this in mind as well. And uh, to make it simple, profit, yeah, money in, minus money out. And I mean, this could be several different things uh, in these. But to, to keep it simple, it's money in, min minus money out. But then you can argue, but hey, quality is important. W my company is not only about making profit, it's, more, it's about quality, to make quality products for their customers. Well, I would say qu quality by itself is not important, inherently uh, important, unless it leads to the aim of the business. And the, business, the aim of the business is gaining profit. So a quality level 
is not really important by itself. It's the result a certain quality level provides that is important. So you can say that, yeah, but if we, if we have a high quality product, then more people will buy our product. Yeah, absolutely. It will lead to more money in, hopefully gain, gaining more profit. So it's really important to, to keep this in mind. And the same goes for testing as well. I mean, nobody wants to pay, wants to pay for testing unless they see in the long term that this will lead to more money in or less money out. And less money out could be, for example, yeah, but we invest in testing right now because it will make us put less money into support or uh, complaints later. So you need to look at it from a broader perspective. But this is really the essence of, of why, why customers or companies invest in testing. No shocker? No? I would like to give you... So, so now we basically have the foundation of, of, of the concepts. And I would like, like to give you three mantras, really. How, how can you, as a tester, become more business-minded? And how can you do it to, to, so we don't miss these, uh, so we can decrease the risks of, of um, failure in the project? And the first one is to really understand your business. And what I mean with that is to understand what, what are the core values of your company? What, what's the identity of the company that you're working in? I mean, this is uh, the, the core values are basically your, your company's promise to the market that this is what separates us from the pack. That this is what separates us from other companies. So all, all you do, all products or systems that you are testing and working with must not conflict with the core values because then it will affect the brand in a negative way and the business by itself will suffer. So I can ask you here, how many here knows all your company's core values? Hands up. Hmm? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? yeah, it's good. I mean, uh, I would say that when I go out to uh, clients, uh, meet clients, and uh, I ask them these questions, wh where do you have your co core values? Most of them say, well, they are somewhere on the web page, I guess. And I mean, that's totally out of whack, because they, then how can they know that the systems and products that they are doing, they deliver, the, the message they deliver to the market is not conflicting with these core values. It's important to understand how do you really, how does a business earn money? Um, we can take an example, for example, uh, Sony. Uh, I mean, Sony, they sell mobile phones, but I mean, they sell it to mostly to operators. So their main customers are operators. Then, of, of course, I mean, if the end users don't buy the phones from the operators, the operators won't buy phones from Sony in the next run. But still, it's really important to understand how this chain works to when you're testing as well, so you're testing for the right things. Distinctive competence. Uh, Volvo, for example, has the competence how to build cars, how to manufacture cars. But their, Volvo's distinctive competence is how to build safe cars. The safe car, that's what separates Volvo from other competitors. So, their distinctive competence is to build a safe car. And I mean, this, is, this must go through the entire organization, how they're working with the systems, the products that they're doing. So if Volvo were thinking about creating a sports car, it shouldn't be just any sports car. It should be the safe sports car, because otherwise it might conflict with the brand, Volvo. It's important to understand uh, the competition what, what kind of uh, what, what does it, what are the competition doing uh, for for your company and uh, how can you when you are testing for certain products how can you 
what's your advantage to their the competition's products? Because it's very important to in order to succeed in this high competitive markets to to really build on the advantages and not focusing mainly on the strengths. Because if you don't focus enough on the ad advantages, then someone else will take it from you, and they, that will take you, then you will lose market share. So it's really important that everyone in the organization understand these things, including testers. If we look at McDonald's, McDonald's I'd like to see it in two, two different perspectives. The first, if we look at McDonald's group, you, you can uh, ask yourself, for example, what, what business is McDonald's in? What, what kind of business are they? And it, the answer is not the hamburger business. Because if we look at it from a group perspective, McDonald's group perspective, uh, what McDonald's group does is that they buy land in attractive areas and they build restaurants in on these locations and then they rent it or sell it to franchisees. So from a McDonald's group perspective, their business is to find these locations and build restaurants, of course with the McDonald's concept, but their business is not about producing hamburgers. But then you can say as well, but hey, look at it. If we look at it from a restaurant perspective, this specific restaurant, what business are they in? And I would say, imagine yourself working as a tester in this restaurant. How would you go about to test if this will be a successful outcome of this uh, restaurant? You could do is that you could uh, test the quality of the products that they are doing. And uh, I mean, you could test uh, the, the quality of the hamburgers. But I would say that, I would bet that uh, if you do, would do that, probably you as a tester would be quite sad with the outcome, and uh, also the, the customer paying for the product would be very sad, because probably you wouldn't release anything to them. I mean, quality is an important factor for McDonald's, a certain quality, but that's not why they are so successful. Anyone here, can anyone here make better quality hamburgers than McDonald's? Hands up, yeah? I mean, so that's not why they are so successful. I mean, what makes them so successful, if I were uh, working as a tester in this specific restaurant, I would uh, focus and I would measure on measure the time it takes from a customer placing the order until it receives the hamburger or the food that they have ordered. Because what McDonald's, the business that they are in and what they are doing is that they are delivering good enough quality food in a fast speed and at a decent price. That's what they do. And that's what makes McDonald's successful. Right? The second mantra is to really understand your market. And if we look at an organization, you quite often have these two primarily, primary focuses. You have either the focus of building the right thing, or you have people with a focus on building the thing right. And very often, I would say that the business owner are concerned of building the right thing. They want to build products and services f that the market needs, who so that solves problems for the market. While if we look at uh, the technical R&D uh, department, for example, they are more concerned about building the thing right. Because they have got a specification of this is what I want from the business owner, I, I want a product that work like this. And uh, they try to apply that and uh, work according to these specifications. And, uh, and I mean, from a business owner perspective, many of them, they, they don't really understand how we are working in the technical part. And most testers are very close to the technical part because we are, we are sitting in a, 
close to the developers, development team, and uh, and work close with them. We have stand up meetings every now and then, and I mean, uh, of course, we can have contact with the business people as well, but not really that often in most cases. So I would like to see testers to bridge this gap that can quite often occur between the technical side and the, uh, and the business side to combine building the, right, building the right thing with building the thing right. And uh, I, as I said, it, I think many testers do that, do this I in to some extent. But I think we can do more, and we can. We need to help the technical part to understand the business side, and we need to s a business side to understand the technical side. So, in that sense, we can. We are in a good position to bridge this gap. And by understanding this. And you need to understand your market. And when I say market, I mean, for example, what, what's the company's market position? What, what position are you in? Are you the competitor or are you the market leader in your field? This is really important on how you communicate to the market. And in the systems and the products that you are testing, uh, testing it's the same way. You need to understand how, how are you perceived by the market when you are doing the, your products. Because if you can do certain things and produce certain kinds of products and services if you are the market leader, but not as a competitor and the other way around. And you really need to understand that and how th the balance between these. You need to in understand the importance of time to market. I mean, it's easy as a tester to say, hey, I, I need more time. I haven't been testing this uh, enough so uh, w we cannot release this product or my i rec my recommendation is that we won't release this product but you need to understand that certain products it doesn't really matter if you uh, certain products have a market or uh, market window of opportunity so if you miss this market window it doesn't really matter if you release it because then you might just as well don't don't release it at all. So it's really important to understand that certain products and marketing need to be fit into this market window. Otherwise, yeah, you might as well drop it. So it's I mean, in many cases, I would say that testers have the understanding. If they say this is not good enough to deliver, they have enough on their feet. But it's important to not just say it. Yeah, we need one one month more or one week more, but just because, I mean, you can never test enough, and uh, so in that sense, you need you really need to understand that this is also an important factor. You need to understand who are your buyer personas, and when I say buyer personas, uh, many testers work with uh, different uh, target audiences, for example, of the products, but the buyer personas might not be the same. Uh, and I have an example here. Uh, a company called Duro, who makes uh, mobile phones for uh, focused for senior people. And uh, what they're doing is that uh, they have actually more than 15 different target audiences. I mean, you can say that, okay, uh, seniors, uh, you can imagine when testing this, yeah, you're Agda, Hutti, 70 years old, uh, never used a mobile phone. How would she, she approach this uh, application or, or, or phone? But do we actually have more than 15 different target audiences and buyer personas? So, and the buyer persona could be Agda, 70 years old, who have never used a mobile phone. It could also be uh, Stefan, 65 years old, who really wanted uh, 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 the latest iPhone, but his vision or hearing capabilities does not serve him as well it did a few years ago. So, but the buyer persona could also be the children of these two target audiences. So, when Duro make uh, 
their mobile phones, they are not only they are not only taking into consideration the buyer personas, the target audiences, but also the buyer personas of their products. And they take it actually a, a step further because you can also take a look at they release different mobile phones for different markets or regions. And if we look at this, uh, yeah, the US, uh, the different colors here represent the density of seniors in these locations. So the green fields here represent a low density of seniors and the dark blue one is a high density of seniors. So this is also important for a company like Doro to understand how, how does the how does the segmentation look like here and how should they approach this market and be actually locations in a specific market? You need to understand the third mantra is to really understand the business value of the product under test. So now we're, we have been talking a lot about the business and the company and the organization, but now we are looking at the, the specific product on the test. And it's really important to understand what problem is this really supposed to solve for the, for the user? I mean, it can be quite easy from a technical perspective to, to build something that is technical cool and hey, everyone should like this. But if you don't, cannot connect it to the problems you should solve for people, it, yeah, people won't buy it. It's, quite easy as that. And I would say that as a tester, you can actually try this for quite many products. You can go out and ask people, how would you use this? How, what about we, how, how about we did this work like that? And uh, have a discussion with potential buyer, buyers and buyer personas. So stop guessing and get out of the comfort, get out of your comfort zone, get out of the office and get out to the market and ask the people there how they should solve or interact with, their, with the product that you are testing, and also what problems are, the, are you really solving. And also, also from a produ product point of view, how is your product earning money from this specific product? I mean, it could be that, yeah, well, we, we will not make profit on this product, but it, it is a byproduct that will amplify the, uh, the profit in some other products that we have. Or it's a product that we need this product in our portfolio because it's, uh, it complements the other products in the same portfolio. So, but it's really understand how does this work? Is this specific product that you are testing, uh, is, is the idea that it should generate profit or is it for itself or for anyone else in the organization? And how does that look like? We have uh, this, C I think it was, it was the CEO of uh, L'Oreal who said that in the, if we look at what this, yeah, what problem is this product solving? And um, uh, the CEO of L'Oreal said that in the, in the factory we make cosmetics, in the stores we sell hope. And I mean, that is really why people are investing in this product. It's not because it's cosmetics, it's because they believe it gives them hope of anything more than they have today. So. So this is really important to understand that although you can quite easily think that, oh, okay, the, the problem cosmetics is solving is to get color on the lips or whatever, but it, that's, you need to take it a step further. So the product you are testing, you need to question the business value of your product in a similar way as you question the product on the test. It's, I mean, all testers know that you should ask questions to the sy system, but it's quite easy to get stuck in the, from a technical perspective and not seeing the broader picture and, and also testing for business value.
And as I said earlier, no one wants to pay for testing. So you need to know when to stop as well. It's easy to say, yeah, we need, we need more resources or we need more time or whatever. And, and I would say most times you're probably right. But you need to ask yourself this question. Is this really from a business perspective? Can I, can I defend this from a business perspective? Or is it better to release it with okay, good enough quality instead of top-notch quality. And then you can ask yourself as well, hey, why, why me? Why, why should always test do some new stuff? Why, should, why can't anyone else take this instead? Well, I would say it's because uh, you are in a unique position as a tester, because you have a really good understanding of the product, you, un you have the product overview of how, how the, the product and the teams are organized, uh, and you have all these interfaces with stakeholders already. So you have basically everything in place to, to get this right. So you are communicating with uh, product owners and business owners and stakeholders, but I mean, if you, if you keep in this, in, is this in mind, I can promise you that the discussions with the product owner will be much more fruitful when you ask him these kinds of questions. Because these are, are the things he is concerned about. He is not concerned about whether the test environment is up or not. I mean, he is uh, interested in the value that this product will solve, uh, give to the market and the, product, the problems it will solve for the users. And what could we expect if, if we follow these mantras? Wh what could we expect? We can expect more profit, more profitable projects. If we prioritize our testing and testing what is really important, and then I say not only from a technical perspective, but from a business perspective as well. What is really important testing here? Then we can generate ideas to improve the product even more as a tester early in the development cycle and not only ship it and wait for the customers to uh, feedback and improve it later. And it will increase the chance of a successful project. And also one very important thing is that you, if you have this if you have these discussions with stakeholders and business owners around the organization, you will become a more an exceptional valuable member of the, to the organization, not only to the development team, but to, to the entire organization. So I want to leave you with this that I mean it doesn't really matter. It, there is an English saying, a pig with a hat is still a pig. And I mean, it doesn't matter how, how top quality your product that you are testing is if it's not solving any problems for the users. It will still be a failed project. And you don't want to be part of failed projects. You want to be part of successful projects. And then you need to keep this in mind. And with these mantras, I would say that you, you can actually increase the probabilities of delivering successful projects. So, I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Any questions?